Welcome to our daily Forex market analysis, and this is for trading on March the 11th, 2020. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money, especially right now with so much volatility in the markets. All right, so we will get started with Forex Factory or our calendar as usual here. Um, the big things that are going on in the market before we dive into the news here. Um, so we have seen some wild swings in um, yen crosses, dollar crosses, as well as our stock market. Um, and so in terms of the developments there, we... Um, we heard some comments from Bank of Japan as well as Ministry of Finance in Japan. So essentially, uh, Japan announced a big stimulus package, about $4 billion worth, and this is where we saw Japanese yen uh, drop as a result. This is why all the yen crosses went up. And um, aside from that, uh, Ministry of Finance has also uh, talked about the price of yen. So they are they don't like the fluctuations in the price of yen that we are seeing these days um, and what this means is that they may be um, ready to intervene in the market so they they said they're watching the prices closely and they may intervene in the market so when we see bank of uh, sorry a ministry of finance who is the one who will give that order and then bank of japan does the intervention so when we see that intervention basically we are likely to see the yen crosses go up because they will um, they will start sen selling yen because yen is too expensive now and Japan being an export economy is very important for them to manage the price of uh, their exports. Uh, so that's, that's one of the developments and uh, as a result of that we have seen yen crosses go up across the board. Another thing that we have seen um, also uh, is our stimulus, our measures, or sorry, I should say fiscal policy measures from U.S. Uh, so President Trump has talked about um, doing payroll cuts for people. And also, um, they were also talking about bailing out oil companies. So keep an eye on how those developments come around. But as a result of that, we saw the stock markets uh, go up because that's a positive news uh, for overall, overall stock market. So that's what we have. So now let's take a look at what's going on. Um, oh, also, another thing that we have seen is that um, China is now opening up uh, the cities that they had shut down. They are, um, they are not in lockdown anymore. They are slowly uh, letting um, those cities kind of come out and let people go to work and all of that. So quarantine measures are not as stringent. So they are slowly removing them. And that's a positive um, as well for the stock markets. Um, so... Coming up here on on Wednesday, we have um, we have some GDP numbers here for UK. We also have annual budget release here from UK. We also have CPI and core CPI numbers um, from US. So. These numbers at this point may not make much of a difference, but CPI numbers are usually important uh, for the Fed. But right now, a market is basically has been pricing in an interest rate cut. Uh, so we'll have we'll see how these um, numbers come out. We also have um, Secretary Munchkin speaking. So again. We'll have to keep an eye on uh, these things because any sort of language in in regards to uh, stimulus packages or tax cuts and any of that kind of stuff is um, is good for the stock market. So we'll see swings based on that. So that's it in terms of the news. Let's go on to our charts and take a look at all the wild stuff that's going on. Euro dollar here. Euro, we have seen a huge drop in euro here. We had um, we saw this move up. So basically, all the moves that we saw at the open uh, up of the mortgage, sorry, open up of the market um, have been reversed today. So we had seen a huge move up all the way into 1.15 um, for euro dollar, and today all of that came back. So right now we have a bearish candle close here 
for euro. It is into important support and resistance, so we need to keep an eye on that. But as of right now, this is looking bearish. I will look for a pullback either into 1.3320 level or one point. Um, sorry, 1.1320 or 1.1350 level right into here. And then we could see a continuation move to the downside. But do keep, a, keep an eye on things because we could see more volatility in the markets. So bias here is bearish and target is 1.1220 for euro dollar. Pound has also dropped quite a bit. We were looking for a drop in the pound, but this was this was lot larger than I had thought we would get. So bias here is bearish, but do keep in mind we are into this important support here. And this is where price had struggled a number of times before it dropped further here. So at this point, bias is bearish, but I would keep an eye on pullback so we could get some big pullbacks here. And in terms of our levels to watch for pullbacks, um, one is 1.2980 or 1.2950. So I would keep an eye on um, these levels here. And I'm looking for a move like that. So bias is bearish here for pound dollar. Aussie dollar here, we have seen a drop price. Uh, price has been trading in this range for quite some time. So yesterday we had seen a big move up and then a drop today. Now it looks bearish, but again, keep in mind, we are into the support level here where price had bounced off of. So keep an eye on that one. Once we see a break through that, we could see a continuation lower. So Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Canadian dollar are being impacted by the, the price of oil or commodities in general, but Canadian dollar, especially with the price of oil. And as a result of that, we have seen all the commodities currency, all the commodity currencies are really weak uh, right now. And if that continues, we could see a, a further move to the downside. But do keep an eye out for any comments from Russia with, um, with any kind of comments in regards to negotiating with OPEC or working with OPEC, any of those things, if they do have a meeting with OPEC and they agree to, um, to the terms of the OPEC in terms of oil production, then we could see the oil prices reverse. So once that comes out, um, oil could shoot up. So just something to keep in mind, which means our commodity currencies will also shoot up at the same time. Uh, so for now though, this is bearish. Uh, the caution here would be if price does not go through this level, it could go back into the range. So right now, um, Aussie is range bound. So if it doesn't break through the support, it could go up. But for now, I'm looking for a break to the downside and bias is bearish for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar, this one as well, bias is bearish here. We have seen price just trade in the range here. And now we are... So now we are still in this um, range. We have a nice bearish candle close. So I'm looking for price to drop towards 0 0.6200 into the base here. And then if it goes through that, we could see a further drop. But for now, bias is bearish and 0 0.6200 uh, is the target. Dollar CAD here. Dollar CAD hasn't done um, or has done really well because Canadian dollar hasn't done too well. So in this case, the candle close for today is a neutral. So we could see price go in either direction. So like I said, especially with the price of oil, um, just keep an eye out for any kind of comments uh, from OPEC or Russia, uh, any of these or Saudi Arabia, because they will dictate where price goes for oil and which in turn will dictate the price of Canadian dollar. So we could see a drop here. Um, so I would keep an eye on that. So at this point, I would look for a potential pullback into this 1.3750 level and then maybe one of these. But right now I'm expecting price to trade in a range. So bias is neutral. And the range that I'm looking at is this range for dollar CAD between 1.362 or 1.3600 and 1.3780, even all the way into 1.3800. So this is the range I'm looking for price to um, react in. If it goes through it, we could see a further drop, uh, but that will be based on oil price going up. 
Let's take a look at our commodities now. Uh, silver here, uh, we did see a drop in silver prices into support level now. This is where it has reacted multiple times. So we'll see how this level plays out. For now, bias is bearish. We could get a pullback all the way into 1716, or it could stop right where it is, which is 17. So if price stays below 17, then we could just get a further move to the downside like that. And first target would be 16.50 here. Next one, 16.35. So for now, bias is bearish. But if it goes through this level, we could see it go um, into 17.20 here. So for now, I'm new, uh, sorry, bearish on silver here, but we'll have to keep an eye on things. Um, if it holds above the support, this one could go back up. So that's the... Um, that's the level to, this is a level to watch out for because it could go all the way up there. Gold here, gold has dropped quite a bit today and bias here is bearish. In terms of a pullback, we could see a pullback into 1657 potentially and then a further drop here. And 1630, um, sorry, 1635 would be the first target here. And then if it goes below that, we're looking at 1625. So bias here is bearish for gold. Oil, we did see some recovery in oil, but uh, not as much as a lot of people would have hoped. So we do have a bullish candle close and we'll have to see how the developments. So there were some comments in regards to Russia potentially um, coming to an agreement with OPEC. So if an agreement is reached, that would be positive for oil and we could see a big jump up in oil. In regards to the levels here, let's take a look. Uh, this is a strong level here at 36. So that's the first target. And then if it goes through 36, we're looking at 38. So bullish bias here for oil. Copper here, copper has moved up. So at this point, I'm looking for a retest where it is, 2.48. And if it holds above that level, I would look for it to go higher into 2.52. And then we could potentially see a move up into 2.55. So bias is bullish for copper. Bitcoin here, Bitcoin um, seems to be finding a foothold here as well, came into support here. And now I'm neutral on this, it's still, holding between these two levels at 82.60 and 76.30 level here. So we'll just watch and see how this one goes. So my bias here is neutral for Bitcoin. S&P 500 here, we see uh, price shot up today and it came all the way into where the market had opened. Um, so this one here, it looks bullish, but it is into resistance. So when we saw this first initial drop, price did recover the next day, but then it became range bound here. So what I'm looking to see is, do we get a similar move here or is it going to break the high and start moving higher? So at this point, it is pulling back into the range. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Um, there were some addition, some um, lot more cases of the coronavirus um, from Japan and um, Italy is still in quarantine. And there are, of course, the coronavirus fears around the world. So at this point, market is just kind of settling and it hasn't really, um, it's still volatile. So that's what I would say. Um, in this case, right now, I'm looking for a move in this area, just like it um, did here. So I'm looking for a move lower potentially. With this one here, um, the first pullback level is already, uh, it's already at the first pullback level at 28.10. It could go into 27.80. And then we could see price go up from here. Um, so we'll have to see. For now, I'm just looking at a range bound move potentially. But if it holds above 28.20 here, um, then we could see it go all the way up into 2950. So for now, I'm even though we have a big bullish candle close, I'm neutral on S&P 500. NASDAQ here, we did see price go all the way up 
into Friday's low here. So right now, um, it is going sideways here. Again, it's pulling back a bit. I would look for a pullback into 81.20. And if it holds above that, we could see move back higher. Uh, so for now, I'm neutral. We'll just have to wait and see how this one plays out. So if it bounces from here, I will look for a move all the way into 85 here, 8,500. Um, so keep an eye. Dow Jones, same thing here. We are seeing the price essentially go back and forth in this range. But if it holds above 24,380, this one could go higher um, all the way into 25,760. So keep an eye on 24,380. If it holds above, first target would be all the way into 25,000. And then second target would be 25,760. And then DAX here, this one's just been going sideways as well. So we'll have to see um, how it reacts to the resistance level. If it holds below here, of uh, below 11,000, I will look for this one to become range bound as well. But if it goes through the resistance level, next target is 11,250 and then 11,630. So the, those will be the two targets or maybe just into 11,500. So those are the two next targets uh, for DAX here. FTSE, same thing. It did uh, go back up and now it's in this range still. So I would look for, again, a resistance at 6250. If it holds below this level, then I am looking for price to basically do one of these. Um, but it could just turn around here and then go higher. Uh, so look out for a move like that. For now, I'm neutral. Nikkei here, Nikkei is going sideways here as well. We did have a bullish candle close for the day here. Uh, but right now, as we can see, it's, it's going down. It went down and now it's, it's going back up. So it looks kind of neutral at this moment. What I'm looking for here would be uh, this move at the resistance level into 19,980. If it goes through this level, we could see it go all the way into 20,430 and then into 20,750. So for now, bias is neutral, but look out for break here of 19,980. So 20,000 level, and then we could see it go higher. So neutral bias for Nikkei as well. Um, at this point, I would say the volatility is not completely out of the market. So market uh, prices can still uh, become volatile and do crazy things. So I would suggest being careful. So that's it for today. Have a wonderful trading day, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.